Greetings viewers and welcome back to my channel. And today's video is going to be a teardown and review of the K-Line Press Pass Driver and DI for Bass. It's uh, the CP59. This is actually the earlier version pedal that came out before the wine cellar, the CP60, which is a more popular pedal. And K-Line has sent this to me free of charge in exchange for an honest review. They are not compensating me monetarily in any way. And I'm actually very excited to check this pedal out. I've had a couple people on my channel actually ask about this, but this pedal has been a little difficult to obtain because it's not on Amazon and you can get it on eBay and Reverb, but I haven't seen too many of them come up. But it re retails for about $39 to $55 US uh, all in with shipping delivered to your door. And this looks to be a very you know, well-packaged pedal. It actually came in a larger clamshell box, and this was inside. And let's do an unboxing and see what we get. A quick unboxing. We get the pedal itself. We have this 9-volt battery to barrel tip adapter to power the pedal if you're not going to use it on a power supply. And then we also have these rubber feet with some adhesive backing. If you wanted to put them on the pedal, they have the indentations underneath. If you were going to use it on the ground and not install it on the pedal board, we also have a very adequately packaged box, got plenty of foam, and look at that. We got a Shark logo. One of the most fun things that I like about effects pedals is not only listening to how they sound and what they do to your tone, but looking at them visually is also an important part of buying a pedal. The graphic work on a lot of the K-Line pedals I really enjoy. I think there's a lot of interesting pedals that they have, and that alone is an integral part of buying a pedal for many guitar players. It's also got to have a very interesting name, and in this case it's called the Press Pass, but they have other pedals that really don't have anything to do with what they actually do in terms of a name, but it's interesting enough to where it sticks in your mind and you want to have that pedal just for the sake of the name. To reinforce the point that I'm talking about, I'll use the example of the fart pedal. It has funny graphics and it makes fart sounds. It does nothing else but that. And that alone is why people want to buy that pedal. Getting back to the pedal, it looks like it has a couple different features than the wine cellar. It does have a three band EQ, a bass, mid, and a high, and your typical volume and your gain. Now this ground lifts and change gain toggle switch, I have no idea what that does. <laughs> that is gonna be the interesting thing to actually look at this pedal. I do have a treat for everyone. I did request the schematics for this pedal and K-Line did send those to me and I will be able to tell you what this switch is actually doing, if anything at all. To answer a question that I got on my wine cellar review video, the question was, can the press pass and the wine cellar pedals be connected directly to a power amp via the XLR connector and this pedal would become your preamp to drive the power amp? The answer to that is no. This pedal is a DI box. It is a direct insertion box. It's taking instrument level, which is a very low level, and it's converting it to a balanced signal, but the level coming out of the XLR is microphone level, mic level. Power amps typically need to have what's called line level, which is positive 4 dB in order to drive to their full volume. This requires further amplification, so a mixing console will then take the signal coming from this pedal and further amplify it in order to drive a power amplifier. Now I say this in general because most power amplifiers on the market today are expecting line level positive 4 dB signals on their inputs. Some power amplifiers may actually have the feature where they can switch their inputs from line level down to instrument level or mic level, but it's not something I find very common, especially in the pro audio world. So just keep that in mind. If you wanted to go that route, just know that the XLR is microphone level, not line level. On to construction quality and circuit design. Construction quality is great. Extruded aluminum case, very similar. It's actually, it's probably the same as the wine cellar and many of the other K9 pedals. It is fairly heavy for its size, and I am certainly putting my approval on the construction quality. It's what I would expect from K-Line, no issues there. 
On the topic of circuit design, I have a treat. I have the schematics. Now, I'm not going to show in full detail the schematics out of respect for the engineer in Japan and also K-Line, but I will be zeroing in on the function of this switch. As mentioned with the wine cellar, this is not a true bypass pedal in the traditional definition. The input and output on the quarter inch is a buffered circuit, meaning that this does require power in order to pass the unaltered signal, even if you do not have this pedal engaged. Not a big deal, but that's how the architecture of this pedal is set up. This switch is a two pole single throw switch, meaning that it's got two circuits running through it. And when the switch is down, those two circuits are closed. When the switch is up, both those circuits are open. Here on the schematic, I'll start off with the XLR output stage. You have your non-inverting, and then you have your inverting op amps here. The in, uh, inverting one goes to pin three, and then the non-inverting goes to pin two. That's your hot. This has a problem, and if you haven't noticed, it is actually right here. It is on pin one. Pin one is reference to AGND, which is the analog ground or the signal ground. This is a very common misconception with how an XLR is supposed to work. And that is where I have a problem because pin one should not have any reference to analog or signal ground. That is meant to be the earth ground shield of the, of the XLR cable. If you tie analog ground to it, that leaves you open for potential noise. Uh, if there's a ground potential difference between, say, your, the PA system and your amplifier system, you usually should be able to lift that ground, that shield, earth ground so that they don't have any chance of creating noise on your system but because it's got, got a tie to analog ground there's a very high potential for that to happen the next part here that i'm going to focus on is that change gain slash ground lift switch and as i mentioned it is a two pole single throw switch in this case it is showing in the up position but let's highlight the two circuits of what it's doing it is lifting the ground but it's not lifting the ground in, in the traditional sense so the first section is right here and also for full disclosure this schematic is not entirely correct this is actually an earlier version of the schematic not the one that i have uh, the board is version 3.2 i believe and while that the only difference for this particular focus is that this 47 ohm resistor is not in circuit so just ignore that when the switch is in the down position it is connecting earth ground to analog signal ground your signal ground there and then on the other side when the uh, when the switch is in the down position it is bypassing this 10 kilo ohm resistor and then it will flow directly to this 10 kilo ohm and 20 kilo ohm when it is in the up position uh, it will actually put this 10 kilo ohm resistor back in circuit and that is how you get a 6 db reduction in your overall gain this applies to the quarter inch output stage and also the xlr output stage from what i can tell the rest of the circuit is fine the only thing that i would suggest that i would do if you get this pedal is that we're going to have to take the wire that goes to pin one of the XLR connector and just disconnect it from the PCB. It's a lot better of a scenario to just have pin one floating and have the ground be tied back at the PA system. That way it doesn't interfere with your bass guitar rig. And unfortunately, the way that it is designed on the board, this ground lift switch slash change gain is not gonna work for lifting the ground it'll be useless from a ground lift perspective. However, the gain change function will still be intact by disconnecting that pin one wire from the board. You'll get a six dB reduction when it's in the up position, and then you'll get a six dB addition with the switch in the down position. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up here and I will be doing some sound demos on this in another video. But this is in context of how I have the press pass installed on my affordable pedal board here or affordable board. And I have the press pass first and then the wine cellar. So I can kind of switch between the two for a nice, say, clean tube emulated sound here. And then I have more of a 
mid-scoop driver sound with the wine cellar. I'd say out of the two, if you were going to get either of them, I would recommend the wine cellar over this one. This one has just got a lot more flexibility, even though you don't have the mid-control on the wine cellar. That's the only thing I wish they would have added on there. And to touch upon the XLR output, as I mentioned, this has an analog signal ground reference to pin 1, which is wrong. And the best way to solve it, if you do not want to do anything inside the board to remove that pin 1 wire from analog signal ground, you can use an adapter like this, which is uh, it's from HOSA. It's a GLT-255. All it does is disconnect pin 1 from the XLR. That way, you don't have any connection of the analog ground to the chassis ground back at the mixer. At the time of recording this video, again, I did get the schematics for the press pass, but it was for an older version of the board. I can't imagine that the updated version is going to be that much different. The core issue with the ground switch here is still a problem, but it can be overcome with the simple adapter like this. Just know that if you really want to use this switch on the down position, you have full volume. If you set the switch up, you get 6 dB of reduction on the outputs of the quarter inch and the XLR respectively. As always, if there's any questions on these pedals, feel free to leave a comment below. Till the next time, guys, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Cheers.